Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So what we're going to do today is give the Claw Hammer Supply stainless steel distiller a run for its money. This, I believe, is going to be the first time you have seen a stainless steel still like this used in an off-grid application. Every video I think I've seen on YouTube or blog post has been has used a still like this um, in an on-grid electrical heating application. This is going to be the first time we use it that I've seen on a wood fire off-grid. And so uh, Claw Hammer Supply sent this to us. We have the proper paperwork. We have our federal fuel permit. Uh, the steel has been engraved with its serial number and permit number uh, for the federal authorities. And so we're ready to give this thing a go. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to fill this thing with water and I'll walk you through how we do it. Now this is water coming from our 19th century well dug back in the 1850s and like most wells it's a hard water it's full of minerals which is actually kind of it can be a good thing to have water that is rich in minerals however when you're trying to use distilled water you've got to remove those minerals and all the contaminants or you know wh whether they're good or bad out of the water to get pure water and so we're just pulling it from our well 19th century well and we're going to put it in here and see if we can get this water to be distilled. Now, you know, when you distill spirits and things like that, sometimes, you know, you have to distill them multiple times to get a higher proof alcohol. Well, with water, it's the same way. You, or it may be. I don't know. I've never done this before. We may have to distill this water two times, three times to get pure zero parts per million distilled water. We do have a parts per million tester, and so we'll use that throughout this experiment to see how it works, and that'll give us a good reading on, on where, you know, how we need to adjust to, to get our water as pure as it can be. All right, now that we're back, we got this thing filled with water. Let's go ahead and put it together. Okay, so what you see here is the condensing arm. This is the condensing arm that the steam of whatever you're distilling travels through. It travels up through the column into here, and this is basically a pipe within a pipe. And so you have this small pipe that goes into this bigger pipe, and it's, you know, obviously connected together. And then uh, it, it exits over on this side right here through a heat, uh, heat uh, tolerant silicone pipe. It goes into your collection, right? So once it, get, it goes in this end steam and it comes out this end liquid. And the way it does that is because these, this right here is pumping water into the outer pipe, which cools the steam back into liquid. One is an intake and then the other is a return and it goes back and forth. And what we use to do that with is this pump here. This is a small submersible 20 watt pump and this will work fine with the solar panel that we have working for us here in the kitchen. Uh, we have a, a small battery and a charge controller and we can just plug this right into it and then run it um, with what we have in, you know, with the inverter that we have uh, right here in the kitchen. And this will pump the water through the condensing arm to cool it from steam back into liquid. Okay, we got everything put together and all the components are put together and everything's tightened up and we have a stainless steel pot down here that holds about six gallons worth of water and it's going to be running uh, water up through the condensing arm to cool it as it's running. The only thing we have now to do is go ahead and build a fire. Now the fire we thought might be tricky because we have, you know, obviously this temperature gauge here and on the back there is uh, a hole there that usually will take, uh, if you want to use an electrical unit, you can, but it also has a silicone gasket on it. And so we were worried about the flames coming up and getting and damaging the, either the thermometer or the silicone gasket in the back. So what we decided to do, instead of just putting this on an open fire, to take this piece of galvanized metal here and cut out an outline for 
uh, the stainless steel still and put it in there and so the flames are not coming up. And we've run this a couple times with another pot that's about the same size. It works perfect. Uh, and it creates a better draft through the system up out of the outdoor kitchen as well. So that works out really nicely. So that is how we solved our problem with doing this over an open fire. Obviously, at the end of the run, uh, the bottom of the stainless steel is going to have some uh, some charring and some uh, carbon that you're going to need to wipe off. But you know what? That comes off really easy with just some Dawn dish soap and a little bit of elbow grease. comes off really easy. So that's how we're going to do it. So people are often asking us, you know, how are you going to regulate your temperature? Because a lot of times when you're using this in a kitchen environment, you have an electrical dial that you can just turn up and down to regulate your temperature, either on a stove or on a heating device that may be attached to your still. And so, or, you know, a hot plate, things like that. Well, how do you do it over a wood fire? We do this with all of our pressure canning. We do all of our pressure canning over a wood fire, and this is how we regulate the temperature. It's as simple as this. We have another piece of sheet metal right here, and we take that piece of sheet metal, and we just move it back and forth. Oop. Just like that, back and forth over the fire. And if we want to lower the temperature, we push it all the way over the fire. If we want to raise the temperature, we pull it off the fire. It's as simple as that. And, you know, we use everything with a pressure gauge on our All-American 21-quart uh, canner, and it allows us, by using that method, to keep the pressure at 15 pounds uh, PSI, 15 PSI, over the pressure canner, it works great. So we're gonna do the same thing with this. We're just gonna, if, if it gets too hot, you know, around 175 degrees when things start to boil, uh, if you're running a still, obviously it's 175 degrees to start burning off the ethanol, um, then, you know, you start put, using this piece of sheet metal to go back and forth over uh, your fire to raise and lower the temperature to keep it where you want. We've used it for pressure canning, it should work the same way with the still. Okay, while we're waiting for this to come up to temperature, it's currently at about 140 degrees. Um, let's talk about some of the reasons why you would want this. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why you as a homesteader or just a prepper, off-grid homesteader would want something like this to be able to distill your own water. If you're on solar power, you know, a lot of lead acid batteries need to be kept up with uh, distilled water. You need to constantly top off your batteries to make sure they stay at, at working levels and you need to use distilled water for that. We use distilled water on our homestead for our solar battery bank and so this is one of the reasons why we have this. Another reason why we have this is medicinal reasons. Uh, we make our own colloidal silver here on the homestead and if you make your own colloidal silver or other medicinals that require distilled water this is a, a prime example of why you would want a system like this to be able to uh, make your own medicinals. Very beneficial in that aspect. One of the most obvious reasons is because during a grid down situation when there's a time without rule of law, uh, or even during a time you know where there could be a rule of law still, this would come in very handy for making your own distilled spirits. All you need is a basic is is something uh, that can uh, ferment with sugar and yeast, and you can t make your own mash and make your own distilled spirit, which is highly, highly beneficial when it comes to trade and barter. So. Uh, being able to have one of these and make your own distilled spirits that you can trade and barter. I mean, folks, that's how NASCAR got started. That's how most of our political families in Washington, D.C. got started. They got rich by making their own distilled spirits. George Washington, when he left the presidency, started making uh, his own distillery, his own distilled spirits. And so uh, America basically, you can make the case that America was built on this right here, this technology. As you've probably seen from our other videos, when we assembled this already and we did the unboxing, this is a very well-built unit. Claw Hammer Supply did an excellent job of sourcing all the correct materials, 304 food-grade stainless steel, and just quality components to build this system for you. So I know there's lots of systems out there like this. Um, and I haven't been able to review all of them, but I have seen a lot of the reviews, the customer reviews on different websites, and know that they're not all built the same. Not all of them are using actual true 304 food grade stainless steel. They're not sourcing their components from quality manufacturers, and they have done really the homework to make sure and ensure you get a good product. So as you can see, that's right at 210, 212 or so, and it is boiling. Now if you go over here, 
take it to the other side. This is our circulating pot. And we have the pump, it's submerged in there, and the water's starting to warm up a little bit. It's not cold, it used to be cold. And I have replacement water over there to go ahead and throw in there when it gets too warm. Um, but you can see it's circulating. There's the water coming out. And it's going up through the condensing arm. Right there. Going through the condensing arm, then coming back. And the collection is going down, down, down. Let me show you that. Down into here. And that's where it's collecting. And that water in that jar is really hot. Let me see if I can pick it up. Oh, it's not too bad. And this is what we'll be testing the parts per million to make sure, see how distilled water it is. Now, this first couple of jars I'm going to throw away. There's probably sediment inside of the system and inside some of the parts, you know, the collection parts. And so I'm going to throw that away and um, then I'll collect um, one of the other jars and test that one um, and see how it does. Now, the part I was kind of worried about was this piece back here uh, that they include on the still tool to, so that you can put some kind of electric heating element inside there and heat um, from that instead of like over a heat plate or a wood fire, obviously, like how we're doing. And there's a little silicone gasket that goes in there, and I was worried about direct heat flame. Uh, and the, the flame hasn't been able to hit that, but, you know, I'm still kind of worried. I may put an additional heat shield in, underneath that just to protect where that silicone gasket is inside of that clamp right there. And so um, looks like it just, it's doing okay. It's not leaking. So I guess the, the, the gasket is all right. We'll check it later, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Now you can see the pressure gauge. It's reading zero, which is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Um, if for some reason there was ever a blockage in the system that would cause a, a dangerous increase of pressure, uh, this gauge would tell you that that was happening. And that's not included with the system, that's an additional accessory. But one I think is well, that is well worth the money spent on it. Uh, what is included is this 5 uh, PSI uh, uh, safety valve. If for some reason it does get to 5 PSI, as this gauge indicates, then this safety valve would blow and allow um, the gases to safely release. So that is included on all of their um, all of their stainless stills. So that's a good thing, really good. Okay, so we took a bit of a break. It's the next day, and the reason I did that is because when I started testing these jars, uh, they were higher than what they went in when it came to testing you know, parts per million, and so that's not right. Well, I figured out it's because uh, when it comes off the boiler, there's you know, probably millions of microscopic bubbles inside of the water, and the parts per million tester was reading those bubbles. And so you have to let it cool and just rest and then test it, and the results were much better. So here's the parts per million tester that I got, and you can find these easy off eBay, brand new. Uh, this bottle here is the well water, untouched, just the well water, and it measures 19 parts per million. 19, 19 or 20 parts per million. And this is the store-bought uh, water. So this is store-bought distilled water, and it registers at zero to one part per million. You know, zero or one. This is the first jar I pulled off, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And uh, I noticed as uh, the jars began to go, they got, they got more and more pure. So this one, I believe, registered 14 parts per million, and then it goes on down the line. I think this one was about 10, and this one was 6, and these two are both 5 parts per million. And so that's pretty low. That's about a 75% decrease in, you know, dissolved materials inside of the water compared to the well from where it started out. This started off at about 20 parts per million, and this right here, it's really windy out here today if you can't tell, uh, this one here ended up at being at 5 parts per million. Now I don't know if I would have kept on going for a larger test to see if, if it would have gotten better and better. I suspect that you, if you wanted a 0 parts per million, just like a store-bought, a store-bought, um, distilled water sample, you would probably need to save all of your, you know, I guess your hearts of the run, and then go ahead and redistill that. And so that, that's probably the best option. If you want to get the lowest number possible in the tester, you'd probably need to save it and, and then run it again. 
And if that's what you're looking for, you're talking basically about a two-day, maybe a one-day process if you did it all day long. But basically a two-day process to get, you know, four or five gallons worth of zero parts per million or one parts per million store-bought quality distilled water. And so that's not bad. I mean, you think about it, we spend a whole day canning, putting up our tomatoes, you know, for a year, or putting up all kinds of our produce that we're putting into our pantry. We spend days and hours on that. You know, if you spend a whole two days to get, you know, a five gallon, five gallons or so worth of distilled water that's going to last you throughout the year to be able to top off batteries or make medicinal uh, colloidal silver and other things that you would need it for, I don't think that's a waste of time. I think that's time well spent to get a quality zero part or a one part per million product that's equal to store-bought uh, distilled water. Well, that's it. Very excited about being able to use this for the first time. The water turned out great. Uh, in fact, the last test I ran on this jar was at four parts per million. So that's really close to your targeted goal of getting to zero or one parts per million. So it uh, did a fantastic job. I'm very confident that if we saved all of the water that we did, that we did the first run in and then did a second run with that same water, you would get down to your target level of zero or one parts per million, which is just like store-bought quality distilled water. So I think we'd be able to use that um, for all of our batteries and medicinal needs. So again, a great asset to have for your homestead for your homestead and for your preps. If you guys are into preparedness and you want a way to be able to barter and trade, a lot of different things this thing can make for you uh, for that purpose, I highly recommend looking at the Claw Hammer Supply uh, stainless steel distiller. This is the eight gallon version they have. Um, Worked really good. And like I said, it speaks of quality. Speaks of quality. You can just tell they did a, a great job of putting this together and getting all the components right uh, to get a good quality product. So very excited. This is going to get some years of use here on this homestead. And as soon as they legalize um, uh, making distilled spirits for home use, um, we'll be running that with this too. So, <laughs> all right. But until then, it's bottoms up for your water. Good stuff. Very good stuff. All right, guys, we'll see you next time on an American Homestead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really means a lot to us. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now you can support an American Homestead by becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash an American Homestead to see all the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel. You'll get access to private videos, pictures, and even live question and answer sessions that you can participate in. Some patrons will even receive free gifts throughout the year from the homestead. Visit patreon.com slash an American Homestead to check it out and see the rewards of supporting our channel. So we just got done doing the filming for the um, water distilling and people are like, dude, Zach, you ruined the finish, man. It's all burnt. It's just a little bit of elbow grease, not even elbow grease, really. It just comes right off. And um, really simple. Yeah. And if you, add, if you get a tough spot, if you add just a little bit of dish soap, this is Jamie's root beer bottle, IBC root beer. Dish soap really dissolves this stuff pretty easy. Yeah, there you go. Now it's good as new. See? All better. Life is good again. All you people out there with OCD can relax. It's going to be fine. It'll be just like new. There, see? Good to go. On the bottom, you, what you're going to need to do is clean this really good because if that carbon builds up, if you're using a wood fire to heat your, your still, you're going to have poor contact with the fire and you're not going to get as efficient of a, of a heat um, increase as you would if there was no carbon on the bottom of that. So we do the same thing for our, our evaporator when we make maple syrup. Um, you want to make sure the bottom of the evaporator is clean. Anything that you put over a fire 
need to eventually, if it's hopefully you're using stainless steel, uh, but whatever you're using, uh, you want to make sure that it's being cleaned and that carbon is being removed so that you can get good fire to metal contact every time you use it. So, and it comes off, like I said, just get a little bit of Dawn dish soap and a Brillo pad, a little stainless steel pad, and it'll be just fine.